Hearing is the perception of sound in the brain from the vibration of airwaves, which is received and transduced by our ear. The human ear consists of three segments, the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. Vibrating objects create percussion waves in the air that reaches the pinna of outer ear and travels down the auditory canal, causing the tympanic membrane to vibrate. The three bones of the middle ear, malleus, incus, and stapes, then transmit the vibrations of moving air to the oval window on the cochlea, which is part of the inner ear. These vibrations create pressure waves in the fluid in the cochlea that travel through the vestibular canal, pushing against the cochlear duct. The floor of the cochlear duct called the basilar membrane bears the organ of cordy, which contains mechanical receptors of the ear known as hair cells, with hairs projecting into the cochlear duct. Many of the hairs are attached to the tectorial membrane. Pressure waves in the canal cause the basilar membrane to vibrate, bending its hair cells. This bending of hair cells depolarizes the membranes of mechanical receptors and sends action potentials to the brain through the auditory nerve. The middle ear also consists of two additional openings. The eustachian tube connects to the pharynx and equalizes pressure between the middle ear and the atmosphere whereas the round window below the oval window dampens sound waves, preventing pressure waves from reverberating within the ear and causing prolonged sensation. The ear can also capture two important sound variables, volume and pitch. Volume or loudness is determined by the amplitude of the sound wave. A wave with larger amplitude causes more vigorous vibration of the basilar membrane, causing greater bending of the hair cells which sends more action potentials in the auditory nerve. On the other hand, pitch is determined by the frequency of a sound wave, which is the number of vibrations per unit time. The cochlea can distinguish pitch because the basilar membrane is not uniform along its length. The base of the cochlea is relatively narrow and stiff, which responds to waves at higher frequency, whereas the apex of the cochlea is wider and more flexible, which responds to pressure waves at lower frequency. The inner ear also contains the vestibular system, which detects body position and balance. The semicircular canals, arranged in three spatial planes, detect angular movements of the head. The base of each semicircular canal connects to an enlarged region known as the ampulla, which contains hair cells that project into a gelatinous cap called the cupula. When the head starts or stops rotating, the fluid known as paralymph in the semicircular canals presses against the cupula, bending the hairs, which increases the frequency of action potentials in the sensory neurons directly proportional to the amount of rotational acceleration. On the other hand, the utricle and saccule contain granules called autoliths that allow us to detect gravity and linear movement. The utricle and saccule are composed of macula tissue. Tilting the head causes autolift to slide over the macula in the direction of gravity, which causes some hair cells to depolarize as others hyperpolarize. The brain interprets this pattern of hair cell depolarization to determine the exact tilt of the head.